Welcome to Writing Wednesday, Episode 7. If you missed previous episodes, don't worry, you don't have to view them in order. However, some scenes are sequential, so it might be helpful if you go back and review some of the videos. But don't worry, if you start with today's, that's okay! This week, we start a new scene with Marshall and Jasmine. The newlyweds are both doctors discussing a case which seems hopeless. However, Marshall refuses to give up. These are just some of the spoiler alerts as I write my rough draft, The Wedding, Book 10 of the Ramsey Brothers series. Join me as we discuss medical terminology, keeping a research file, and more. Welcome back to Writing Wednesday, where we do an immersive writing experience, basically. I write, I type, I do a small amount of editing as I go, just so where it makes sense and uh, have a first draft. In this one, we are still working on The Wedding, the 10th book of the Ramsley Brothers series, and we're setting up a scene for Marshall from his point of view, which is sometimes hard to remember whose character point of view it is, and not to go head jumping, which is a terrible um, <laughs> flaw of mine. Head jumping is basically where you jump from the thoughts of one character into the thoughts of another character in the scene, and sometimes some people find it hard to follow, sometimes people have no problem with it. So I have head jumped from character to character previously in the books, but that's the joy of being a writer is that you learn more as you go, and you perfect your craft as you go, and you get better as you go, because the more you do something, obviously, the more practice you have at it, and the more skills you get. So for everybody who's out there, who's new, who's a novice, keep writing. It's the best way for you to learn your craft. It's the best way for you to figure out where your flaws are and to learn to correct them. And sometimes, you know what? flaws work. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go against the grain because the flaws are working for you and your characters. And uh, even though it doesn't always make sense, it just works. So that's what uh, intuitive writers would do. Uh, someday we'll talk about intuitive versus methodological versus pantsers versus plotters, but uh, not today. Um, we'll, we'll just keep going in this lovely scene. Now we're writing from Marshall's point of view. So Marshall and Jasmine are two of our lovely characters who have gotten married at the wedding. Um, this is post-wedding, this scene is, but we need to set up some uh, reactions to events that have happened and also to foreshadow some future events and you know it is a rather large coincidence that I am asking my readers to bridge but I think I think they're capable of bridging it so Marshall has just returned from the hospital and he is going to talk to his lovely new wife, Jasmine. And they're still at the hotel because it's a weekend hotel event with the weddings. Uh, at this point, it is either coming in to Sunday morning, like early, early morning, like just after midnight type of idea, or it's coming in to Monday Christmas morning. I haven't decided the timeline just yet. I just know that the scene needed to be written. Um, I don't always write in order of things. I find that sometimes a scene needs to be written and I just got to get it out of my system. So I'll just set it approximately where it goes in the story. And as you can see, there's a scene underneath for Henry from his point of view. And uh, that scene will come afterward because it's important that this scene comes first. And there's actually got to be a little bit of filler um, between these two scenes. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet. Or I might even just let them segue into each other. It just depends how many words get written um, because I like my 
chapters to be approximately 3,500 words, just because I find that's an easy, um, it's an easy length for reading. Personally, I like my chapters a little longer for reading, but when it comes to narrating, it's a very easy length for narrating, and I find that for writing, the 3,500 has been a number that works for me. So I found that out when I was writing the cozy mysteries that I've been writing for um, Camping Girl, and I have been switching up how I'm writing my romance series as a result of that, because before I was doing about 5,000 words, and I would get into choppy scenes, um, just, it's really long for narrating, and I just find that it doesn't work as well for me. So, I apologize for my earlier books that have been released like this. But again, like I said, we all find our flaws and our errors and our mistakes. And, uh, <laughs> sedative. That's funny. You can see that I'm, I'm having a late night. <laughs> it's dark outside and I'm tired and my spelling has gone out the window because I'm tired. So now I just write approximately what it is and let the computer fix it. <laughs> Normally, I would be able to spell that right off. But we all have those moments where we get tired and we write anyway. Sometimes it's a good thing because then you're not as constrained because you're just like, get it on paper and see what happens. And so usually I find that a lot of better emotional scenes come out when I'm tired. But I also find that I'm much more productive in the morning. Because I have become, unfortunately, a morning person, which is funny because I used to be a night person. And now I am a morning person and I have my most energy in the morning. I'm most productive in the morning. I get things done in the morning, which is why I'm narrating right now in the morning. But uh, I was writing last night because I wanted to get some scenes done for Writing Wednesday. And also I wanted to get some more writing done as well. I think I stopped a little bit before midnight, which I like to be in bed far before then. But, uh, you know, sometimes you got to switch up the writing routine. Uh, we got 2,000 words or a little bit over that last night in less than three hours, so that was very nice. And it just depends, depends how things are going, right? So let's do a little bit of reading. Marshall. An exhausted Marshall put his hotel key card into the door, waiting for the green light before turning the handle. It was nearly midnight, and he was finally returning after leaving Dottie with Aunt Rachel, who was the most sympathetic and caring of his aunts in his opinion. I could have left her with Beverly. Beverly's quite nice, too. Rachel is older, so maybe I'll change it, switch it up, and put it to Beverly. But right now, she's she's with Rachel. And Dottie, in case anybody needs the reminder, is Marshall's mom. So it's Gabe, Parker, and Marshall are the three brothers who were supposed to get married this weekend. Due to their father's ultimatum. Let's just throw that into the mix. Yes. With assurances to take... Yeah. Excuse me. Pardon me. With assurances to check in on his mother in the morning... Marshall had made his way back to Jasmine's and his room. Expecting Jasmine to likely be asleep, Marshall tried to be as quiet as he could, softly shutting the door behind him before t kicking off his shoes. Undoing the knot of his tie, he was surprised to find Jasmine sitting up on the edge of the bed, her attention pulled away from a tablet in her lap to watching him. How did it go? she softly asked. Marshall drew in a breath, tossing the tie and his suit jacket on a chair before coming to sit beside her. Not great. I should have been there, she chided gently. He shook his head. There wasn't anything to do. I could have supported you, Jasmine leaned against him. Marshall wrapped an arm around her, pressing a kiss into her hair. It's okay. We weren't there very long. Most of my time was spent trying to get Mom to calm down. I gave her a sedative and left her with Aunt Rachel. I'll be looking in on her in the morning. The doctors ruled it an overdose that the police are currently investigating. Accidental or intentional, asked Jasmine. Uncertain. Marshall swallowed thickly. 
Now you can see over here, we've gone back to my home screen with my beautiful puppy, and then we are picking out a Word document that I like to call research. So every once in a while when I need to know something from the big beautiful internet, and I'm researching a topic, I will throw it in my research file. And once I'm done with it, I'll either delete it or I'll keep it someplace else, just depending on what it is and what I am doing. In this case, I needed to know a little bit more, and believe me, it's not easy doing research sometimes, but I needed to know a little bit more about um, heart arrhythmias, although I knew about those, and I knew about aneurysms because we have some family issues, but uh, I needed to know about... Uh, cardiomyopathy and a few other lovely things such as the arrhythmogenetic genetic right ventricle cardiomyopathy yes i'm butchering that language right there at the moment but uh yes so when you when you need some research sometimes you just got to throw it in a separate little file and make it happen because this is what our lovely patient has okay she could have supported him. It's okay. We weren't there very long. Yes, uh, accidental or intentional. They're not certain of whether the overdose was accidental or intentional at this time. Marshall swallowed thickly. I guess they will let us know what their best determination is. I'm sorry, said Jasmine. So am I, agreed Marshall. He gestured to the tablet. What have you been doing while waiting? I am struggling to write my last official email, sighed Jasmine. It's a res rejection letter. So she has uh, officially resigned from her position with her hospital out on the other coast because she and Marshall will be traveling to her home country and living there. I don't want to get too far into it because I think you should have some surprises as to why. But anyhow, no, Marshall will be, will not be staying in America, and he's, he's gonna go venturing further off. And we'll have to see how that will add into the mix. I'm sure that he will, you know, FaceTime people, things like that, so that he remains a character, because he's been a lot of fun. He's, he's a pretty fun little character. So, a rejection letter, echoed Marshall with a frown. What do you mean? The case of dead man walking, replied Jasmine, activating the tablet and pulling up information. Arrhythmogenetic right ventricle cardiomyopathy. Oh my goodness, I cannot speak today, which is going really well. <laughs> so what that means is his heart and vein walls are so thin that he started heart failure. So basically I've kind of explain that in the next sentence in layman's terms so that people can understand a little bit better this poor patient that she has needs a heart transplant um i needed a character to have some heart issues and so i didn't want to make like i know some things about the heart i know what the uh, aneurysm is so that's where kind of, there's kind of a buildup of blood and the walls stretch and it kind of balloons out and normally they put in like a little metal stent or it could be a plastic stent I'm not 100% certain anymore it's been a while since someone in our family had one of those yes it does happen um, my dad <laughs> was actually the oldest patient in Ontario to get a stent put in and he did really well so I do know something about that particular part of the condition. The other part he did not have, but I wanted to do it because I was like, okay, I'm going to have this character have this condition for a specific reason. And it took a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of researching to find out what would cause this. I mean, I had hoped it would be what I wanted to cause it, but to find the right ingredients of the cause um that took a while so keep keep researching to find what you need to find 
to make a realistic thing. And it's not that, you know, this is fiction. So it's not like I couldn't make up some new thing, which didn't exist before. I could. But sometimes it's fun to root things in reality and go, oh, I never thought of that before. It is plausible. So, oh, where were we are? Oh, rejection letter, echoed Marshall with a frown. What do you mean? The case of dead man walking. I mean, that's a bit mean. I might change that. Um, it's also a little overused. But basically, I want to put an anonymous nickname title on him. Replied Jasmine. So that's that particular title for that case is a work in process. Activating the tablet and pulling up information. That is what the cardio team nicknamed this patient. Arrhythmogenic. Oh my. Arrhythmogenetic. Right ventricle cardiomyopathy. His heart and vein walls are so thin that he has started heart failure. He needs a heart transplant. However, I cannot see any way to make it happen. A needle and thread would just shred the walls of the veins. Marshall frowned as he looked at the scans. That's a big aneurysm under the heart. Jasmine nodded. Normally, we would go through the groin and place a shunt to solve that. But not with so thin of vein walls, Marshall said. Is the measurement correct? Yes, responded Jasmine. It's three weeks old. I've been trying to think of anything we might be able to do to help him, but I cannot see it. Now we are leaving it for my... Now that we... Now we are leaving for my homeland. I'm... It's kind of a weird transition there. I might have to change that a little bit. There really is nothing to be done. I'm just trying to word the rejection letter. Telling someone they are going to die is not easy. This is your last case. Marshall flipped through the patient file. Where's the name? See, there is no name. Which I'm certain would be an oddity. But yes, at the moment, there is no name on it because I didn't want them to know who the patient is just yet. Number one. Number two, it adds a bit of an air of mystery to it. And number three... It might change how doctors worked on that particular case, especially in certain fields and certain areas and certain hospitals. So this person has some influence in those areas. And that means that having it, his name on it might change how they approach the case. So I wanted to remove any identification with it. And I thought that was realistic because I wanted him to have an unbiased professional medical opinion. So it's going to be interesting for them to learn out who it actually is. Um, so there's no name, hence the dead man walking name. Yeah, they're going to maybe change that. I really do think so. It is surprising he's still able to function... Uh, at a reduced working, at a reduced level outside a care home. We're told he's still working, but on reduced hours. See, I'm going to have to change that as well, because you have reduced and reduced. And I do that while writing a first draft. It's not a big deal. Editing will take those things out and uh, hopefully get a little bit more um, concise and differential language in there. So, he's going to be on reduced hours. The file came anonymously from his doctor care team. I suppose they do not want us to know who he is. And that is the important bit and where we're going to leave it today. Because we have more to find out with the lovely Jasmine and Marshall as they dig further into this case and come up with ideas on how to treat it and what to do. And then we will find out how the person in this particular file fits in with the Ramsley brothers' family. Although, at this point, they're cousins. <laughs> One can say that they are all cousins, and uh, it's, a big, it's a big family.
seem like getting together for Christmas at this point with everybody involved. So I hope you have enjoyed listening today. And if you found some value in the video, please hit the subscribe button. Please let your friends know who enjoy the series or enjoy writing for their little tips. And I hopefully will have another Writing Wednesday video next week. We're going to continue this scene and work through a bit more on what they can and cannot do for this patient. So join me next week on Writing Wednesday. I would like to thank you for watching this video and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, or clicking the bell for future videos. All of these things are free for you to do and really help me with the algorithms to grow this channel and to grow my platform. Remember, you can find my audiobooks on YouTube or my ebooks and paperbacks on Amazon. I also have books in the Kindle Unlimited program. So happy listening and happy reading.